forward. Recording in progress. We are now recording. All right. So this is the title slide. And we'll move on to the first view of the exhibition, which shows the title wall with some of the later prints, I say some of the closer to final, but not the last prints um, entered into the exhibition. Um, you'll see that there are recurring themes, motifs, symbols, and all sorts of things that carry through Diane's work. And what I'd like to hear from her tonight, once we get to the, the prints, is so that you can hear from her about why these are important in her work, what she's including them for, and kind of what, um, what kind of personal meaning they have for her. And many of these have very deeply personal meanings. So these are prints. And this is a picture of Diane working in the studio on one of the prints that actually is in the exhibition. So at this point, I thought it would be helpful, especially because we have both Diane and Chris on the call, um, to be able to talk a little bit about what prints are and what printmaking is. So um, Chris or Diane, would you like to take a stab at explaining printmaking? Okay. Um, I think originally when prints were made back, going way, way back, um, and Chris, you can interject anytime, of course, um, um, prints were not done necessarily in multiples, if you go back to the time of Rembrandt, if you go back further than Durer and things, but um, a print is a, it, it's a plate um, of some nature, and it's a matrix of some nature, where um, an artist carves or scribes into that particular um, matrix in some way. If you go, if you're looking at, we'll go to Durer right now, where there's either a wood cup or there's um, an etching or an engraving, or even further and further back. And um, the plate is inked and um, an impression is comes off of that piece. Um, and you're going farther back, these impressions are not necessarily what we, we would call an addition, where the pieces would look, one would look just like the other and look just like the other, look just like the other. As we go further and we, we get, um, well, to, in today's world, um, printmakers are less called upon to create editions and they are having, well, I'm having, I know Chris is having, and a lot of the modern printmakers today, and many of the printmakers, um, you can see some of which are behind me, are some of them will create editions and some will have the opportunity to just try different kinds of things using that matrix and using many different techniques um have i chris did i hit everything so far where'd he go chris all right um i'm wondering if maybe there was a connection issue but i'm sure he'll be back if there was okay. he, and he may be checking on the water that was boiling in the kitchen um <laughs> yes he might be doing that so kim did i hit that pretty well um you did and i mean i often hear chris talking in the studios to groups um visiting doing tours and trying to explain what printmaking is and it's not the most um like easy go-to no, process for people to think of it's, it's not. not um um people use different kinds of printing presses um we have in this piece picture there is a printing press now there isn't a good vision of a printing press. We're going to show you one a little bit later. Um, this piece itself, which is called, um, it's from the um, Morning Primrose series, um, did go through a printing press several times, I think. Um, we are able to do things that are like digital, things that you would actually um, use um, a big um, Epson printer and create other kinds of images that you would not use on a printing press. Somebody who's doing a woodcut would actually might use a printing press or they might use do it by hand using the wooden spoon that you would use in your kitchen. 
um, to taking the, your, this is the printing plate right here, or the, the wood block here, and they would rub with the paper on top of the matrix. Um, and I think one, that's one of the most important points. There is always an underlying matrix that you build an image into, whether you carve it out um, and fill the space with ink, or you carve away something and you coat the top with ink. That's, that's the original information and the paper is put on top to carry the ink off of it. What would happen in a case like this is this would be inked. These particular, this particular plate was inked in two different ways. One, when you get into all the nooks and crannies and crevices, it's called an intaglio wiping. And then when you use a roller on top, which you can see all the colors on top and you might have seen, or you're going to see actually coming up, um, the roller on top um, gives you another way of looking things. And that would be, um, sure, that would be a relief roll. Um, and in this particular case, um, should we move to that, that slide right so now? We'll go so to the next one. To be able this, to is actually, see. this is actually a print in another, another, what well, this is called a collagraph print. And what Chris is actually, we, we went through the printing press and you're gonna see a little video here of us seeing what the magic is because we never know for sure what we're going to get and this is our art you can see the printing press there are um felt blankets on top and um we can run that again if you'd like us to um so you can see it back go back and run it again and that's where we, the magic happens and you see what what your inking did to the plate this is another 12 inch by 12 inch done the same way. Um, if anybody was on Instagram today, um, Arts Westchester and then um, a few other places showed this particular um, group of prints called the Waters. Because um, we were very fortunate, uh, different places picked up the show today, which was very, very nice. It was. Um, it was. Manhattan, Manhattan Graphics picked it up as well, which was very, very nice. They sent out something to their, their people. So that's pulling a, that would be pulling a print. Right. Um, and that is, this matrix is made out of mat board, heavy cardboard with paper on top. Um, my um, collagraph prints are, um, I build them up. I use a lot of hole punches on them. Um, then they're covered in a gloss medium, which is sort of like Mod Podge for those of you who would teach or um, have done home um, craft projects or may have used the, the gloss medium. It's, it's used often in craft projects. And um, what it does is it creates a slippery, almost plastic surface. Um, if you have an opportunity to come to the print shop and you can see one of Chris's pieces, he has a fantastic um, engraving technique he uses um, when he's creating his collagraphs. He does a lot of collagraph work in his prints. I don't know where he is, but I don't either. But, but, but he does. And they're really, really interesting and very different. There are many different types of collagraph prints. I anyway. got kicked off. I got kicked off, but I'm back. Okay. We're, <laughs> We're talking, talking back. About Talking about collagraphs, and I was, um, I talked a little bit about the history of um, printmaking, and I think I covered it pretty well. Um, some of it's from your tutelage um, and Kim's and things I've learned in the past. I will say that I come from a printmaking background, which I goes all the way to my freshman year in college. And um, so my undergraduate degree was with a printmaking um, thesis. And I did not, I stopped doing printmaking after I went to graduate school and I went back to it in the last 10 years where I found my home away from home at the Center for Contemporary Printmaking. So, um, yeah, so we've just, we've just talked about um, the collagraph print and I was just explaining how your collagraph prints do have this wonderful engraved technique. And we talked a little bit about Durer and Rembrandt and 
how um, printmaking techniques have changed over time so people do not all do what is called an edition anymore. People, um, and a lot of the things you will see with my show now and my prints um, are not editions or, or an edition would be a group of prints that are um, all alike. And Chris, as my master printer and the master printer for many of the people on this call right now has created editions for them. And that's one of, one of his, ex, how do you, what's the plural of expertise? Expertises. Um, <laughs> and another is helping you see ways to um, look at a printing plate and what you might do with it and make um, a series of things, which is one of the things I really enjoy doing. But this, I mean, this is the print that won the Best in Show Award. And this one you worked extensively with Chris on. Um, Chris is the master printer, um, helped you as an artist, even though he is a printer and an artist on his own, but he also works with artists who are working on a project and helping to try to facilitate the end goal, the end result of what that artist is wishing to get to with the knowledge and the expertise that a master printer can bring after years of experience and education in printmaking. Um, so Diane, this would be a great print, I think, to dig into because this really was the, the major work. Okay. Um... Something you're going to see in a little while, just to let you know, um, I'm going to talk about something coming up is I, um, one of the, the first things that Chris and I, one of the first things that Chris and I did together was we did a photo shoot and involved in that photo shoot were um, the some of the gloves you see here, which come from my own collection of um, my husband, Rich's, um, um, gloves from his grandmother, my grandmother's gloves and Kim's grand family's gloves or, or gloves she'd been collecting. And um, we took a lot of pictures of a lot of different things, which you'll see from, it was very a very unique day. Um, I wanted to be in a show at the Heller Museum, which is a Hebrew Union College in New York City. And I had decided that I was gonna do this. The show, because of COVID, has been postponed, and it is. I spoke to the um, the curator of the exhibit. It's going to be. Um, it looks like they're opening sometime in May, and it is an exhibit on um, magical thinking, which um, is going to be on superstitions and other persistent notions. They're saying, um, and um, it was really something. I I had this idea. I. There's a, a technique using a silk screen, which is um, many of you have seen t-shirts um, where you use your squeegee and they go down and then create the t-shirt. I was using a technique where you can do a watercolor painting on um, a silk screen. And um, I was making this incredible cake, which I was gonna have all these hamsas. Hamsas are um, hands for good luck in Judaism. Um, if it's pointed down as a hand of Fatima, which goes to Muslim culture. Um, and I thought that this was gonna be terrific. I was gonna have these poles, which came from um, Southern culture. Chris waited it out for the, the few days that I um, did this, this drawing on this huge silk screen. We pulled the print and it really didn't look good at all. So I, um, I went home and I said, I've got to come up with another idea. And we had the, um, the pictures of the gloves. And it occurred to me that um, people are very superstitious about being left-handed. And I don't know how many of you are left-handed, but I am. And my mother also was, and she was one of the people who was slapped on the hand with a ruler. And, um, we tried staging a hand slapping um, situation. We tried staging a lot of different things and they didn't work. And we finally came up with the idea to do um, 10 gloves or a minion of gloves in, in Jewish culture or tradition. And one of them being a left-handed glove. Now, if you look very carefully at this slide, the second one in, is it the left um, on the top <laughs> is, 
a slightly different color white. That is um, your left-handed glove. The rest of them are right-handed gloves. Um, that's using a special technique, which I can talk about in a minute. And the other thing I thought would be really fun to put on this print was um, the inverted Jenny. Now the inverted Jenny is, um, it was a stamp that was created as a 24 cent stamp which was from 1918. Um, there was a printing error and a hundred of these stamps were printed upside down. Um, the, the Jenny has, you'll look, if you look carefully, you can see there's um, an airplane and the, it's in the upper corner. Kim can point to it. Can you um, see my cursor? Where the, that's, the, that is the one Jenny, the one inverted Jenny. And it was a very um, interesting experience for us to create this print together because first we used what was a, called a photopolymer intaglio or photopolymer plate. Yeah. And um, to do that, we used a um, photo technique on which um, on this wonderful 16 inch plate and which had on it the blue portion of the, of the um, airplanes and the, um, the gloves with all of their little details. And Chris meticulously um, inked it up in black and then had to do each airplane individually in blue. Um, then we were ready once the paper dried to create a silk screen to make the red. Now you can't, we don't own the Jenny stamp. They cost millions of dollars. One, one was recently a, a plate of them, that's four, a block, excuse me, of them. Um, four of them were sold recently um, that belonged to Stuart Weitzman. I believe it was in a June auction at I can't remember if it was Park Brene um, or Christie's. I can't remember if it was Hothby's or Christie's. And it sold for, I think, six million, something like that, a lot of money. And so we, um, we took a stamp from the internet, found the best one we could. could. Excuse me. And then um, Chris and I laid out each stamp individually because we couldn't do it before. Um, this is very... Um, very methodically, we couldn't do it before because the paper was going to shrink. You have to deal with shrinkage with paper, a lot of ge geometry, and we had to get everything spaced as perfectly as possible. So once we had all of that done, um, we created a stencil on a silk screen and each of these prints was run through um, a, silk, a silk screen and we created um, what you see here. Um, when I was talking about the one glove being a different color, using another technique, a third technique, um, it's called Sheen Collet. And Chris is better at explaining a Sheen Collet than I am, but it's using a piece of paper that is actually glued during the, print, the um, printing process. And we, it comes apart of the final piece, as opposed to a collage piece of paper. Did I get that pretty well? Yeah. Okay. So um, this will be, this is being featured in this wonderful exhibit in the um, late spring at the Heller Museum in Manhattan, which is um, right near NYU's campus. Yeah. So and, and I, we have this I, one at the entry to the lithography studio gallery where your exhibition is. Like this, this is the piece that started the show. So and I really just want to say a shout out to Sibel Malone, who is the executive director of the Aldrich um, Contemporary Art Museum in um, Ridgefield, Connecticut, because she selected this piece. Um, CCP gave me this great opportunity, oh. but oh, I. But I think that what was really exciting to her about this was not all of the knowledge of my background with, and what I was thinking, and there's one other part of that, but was this was during COVID, this was right after COVID or at the first, um, our first year of it or so. And 
the gloves and we were dealing with rubber gloves and so many things. So that was one of the things that appealed to her about the um, about the print. The other thing is I did work at a stamp auction gallery to put myself through graduate school. So that's a fun aside. Well, yeah. that definitely explains a little more about where the thought came from to feature the stamp. Like I would not have thought of that in relation to the left-handed glove. Yeah. And um, my 91 year old um, cousin is in Vegas. He lives there now. And I invited him to come to this event. He has seen this and he, um, he's not big on Zooms. So he, 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 maybe he'll watch later. Not everyone so, is. Yeah. So, so this is the first uh, slide that shows work that's actually in the exhibition. The subsequent slides will also show work, some of them a single piece at a time, some of them a grouping of them. And as I went through your body of work to select prints to show, um, there were definitely different themes that came to mind and different kind of repeated uh, symbols and directions that I could see evolving through your work. And so if we can go to the next slide, if you mind, we'll go to uh, these two prints. Um, so these are each individual prints. They're quite large. Um, and these are silkscreen monotypes. And if you look closely, you can see all of these um, swirling concentric circles um, and spirals that are in here, as well as some uh, organic like plants and ferns and things. Um, but what's interesting is that for when these were done and then looking at the other work that comes after, um, I, can, I could very distinctly see um, these themes, these image, images and these symbols that begin to, to crop up again and again in your work. Um, can you tell us more about where these were coming from and even the process of doing these? Because the silkscreen monotype, is that similar? Um, to the left-hand jetty? Um, it's very different because you're, I was mentioning before where you use the silk screen to create this, as, um, as, as I mentioned, um, for those of you who aren't that familiar with what a silk screen can do. This is actually, a um, you actually paint on the screen with watercolor materials. Um, that includes watercolor crayons, watercolor pencils. Um, you can actually make stencils where you see those like five, um, they're like five part leaves. I, I, I use a lot of stencils in my work and I was, or I was using a lot of stencils in my work. I really enjoyed doing that. And that's how I created a lot of these, these things. And I'm actually working on, um, my younger daughter, um, Rebecca and her fiance Gabe's, um, Ketuba right now, where I'm even now using, um, stencils on the, um, the silk screen, um, which is really fun. Um, I love waters. The waters are a symbol of Genesis. A lot of my work does come from a, Jew, a Jewish background, um, Jewish tradition. Um, waters, the, the ritual waters, you've got the waters of the mikvah, you've got waters of creation, you've got um, waters of life, um, waters of birth. And I was hoping to create this piece about waters for an upcoming piece on um about water about the beret sheet about the um the, the genesis um theme which um before this was created this pit these prints were created i should say during covid when chris and i were unable to meet we um we met every thursday for the entire day we met um as you guys are meeting right now talking and while well, we're talking and I'm telling you about the work he and I would work and we would create artwork um, using um, his Photoshop and my my concepts and my ephemera and some of the different ideas and fo photography to create work and I had this idea for a water piece and I wanted this to be a part of the water piece which is up and coming and it's still it's still in our files to continue with um, at some point after the show is, is over. So that was um, 
it was a way to uh, for us to um, start this whole whole project. And that was when Kim said earlier um, that this has been going on for over a year. We did start this. Um, yeah, we've we've kept it going. Um, even a few weeks here and there, we've been working on things on online when we haven't been able to meet in person. Yeah. So yes, so that would be about the waters. There's also, if you are able to get to the show, there is um, the Colograph print about of the waters as well, um, and that was also um, written up in Art in Artscope magazine at one point um, because it. It refers to my background. Um, but so Diane, these, I mean, I, I was stunned when I saw these in person and I, I didn't realize that these had been done like in 2019. So much of what I'd been seeing in the studios, like the Left Hand Jenny and some of the other later ones we'll look at are prints that have been additioned or that were part of this, um, more repetitive process, whereas these two are monotypes. So are. these are, I mean, for, um, you know, those unfamiliar with printmaking, a monotype means that there is only one of each of these. Like the, these also, are like, like paintings. It also means that there is no matrix as opposed to a monoprint where you actually have a matrix. And am I correct? Um, so that this was um, as far as I didn't have like a plate to work on. I, there was no way of repeating this in any way, shape or form, as Kim just said, um, which is, yeah, this was, these were fun. It's a I lot of fun. I, I really enjoy doing this. There's another, um, there's another watercolor silk screen in the, in the show and it's actually used in the Primrose series, which we'll see. You, if, we, we, if we go back over the show, we can point it out. Okay. Um, if we have time. So um, looking at a couple of the, the prints that are hanging um, to the right of the, the waters pieces, um, these were a, a couple of prints that I, I pulled out because of a couple of different things. Um, one, I, I was noticing your repeated um, symbolism of the pomegranate, which is in this, and there's also an, a small etching as well. Um, but then also this use of collage and the, the textured layers um, to be able to make the print. Um, and I think this is where, th this is one of the prints with the, the surfaces that have been built up that you've right. made. Um, this, this print, um, actually where the black and white, which is actually a tan paper, um, was a handmade paper. And it was, um, it's interesting because we were starting to talk about the surprise element with making a print that you don't always know what you're going to get. Sometimes you can really plan things. Um, this was a print that was filled with surprises and it had a lot of struggles to get to the point that, um, the black and white or the black and tan that you see now. Um, it took a long time to get there. Um, I, if you're trying something out with a print, it's called a proof. And I went through three different permutations of that print to try and um, the plate to build it up to create it so that it would have as many different of the dots, which refer to the 613 seeds that you would find in a pomegranate, supposedly, which stand for in Judaism, um, the mitzvot or the good deeds. Um, I, my cousin um, one day said she was gonna sit and count them. And she said, there were not 613. I guess each one might be different. I mean, I don't think anybody ever told mother nature. Um, this was fun because I did a tiny, tiny drawing, showed it to Chris and he blew up the drawing on, um, a, um, a copying machine. And then I, using an X-Acto knife, cut out the different, um, layers to create the different, um, 
the two different pomegranates. Um, that part was really, really fun, but getting it to work with the um, seeds was very difficult. If you look at the, um, the more colorful piece, which is a collage, which was made from different proofs that were not as successful, and then became, became this wonderfully successful holograph um, collage. The background where you see the white dots was a fun story. Um, I was working very hard to figure out how to make these dots work. And one day I was heading out with a power drill to the deck and Rich said to me, what are you doing? I said, I'm gonna drill the plate. And um, <laughs> so we did. Um, he did offer to help me. Um, I think I might have scared him a little bit. Um, and we drilled and drilled and drilled. I was thought, thinking that this was going to be it. I was going to get the dots I was looking for for these the seeds. And it didn't quite work the way I planned, but it did work to make this really elegant collage. And like, like Rosie Pomegranate is from um, Song of Solomon. Um, there's a statement that part of it is like rosy pomegranates talking about a woman's cheeks on her face so um those of you who might be interested in knowing um pomegranates are also a sign of fertility a sign um there may have been um the pomegranate may have been um the fruit in eden we don't really know um again um there's also um, if anybody has ever um, studied Torah, there's a, what's called a finial or a rimonim, which is on the top, it decorates the Torah. Um, one of the pieces, the upcoming pieces I have is going to be telling that story. Um, and um, pomegranates are a very strong symbol also of birth and life and they're just a very jubilant gorgeous symbol and the color is very rich and um i love using them in my work so i think they they translated really nicely in this holograph texture um I, and i think we see it especially in the one on the right with the color um to get those depths of that pinky purple color and the balance between the the black and the white, like it it just it, it's it's just such a nice shape and such a nice texture to seem to work with. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so let's see what we have next. Ooh, also texture um, and color. You get a lot um, of color with your work. You get a lot of color with my work. Um, this was really early on in my relationship with working with Chris. Um, CCP has a um, one, there are two wonderful shows that they do every other year. This coming year is called Footprint, where your print has to be 12 by 12, which is one of the reasons I love working 12 by 12. It just happens. The other is the mini print, miniature print, and the prints have to be two, four square, four square inches and no larger. Um, I got really excited. I guess I'll mention three of my favorite artists here, um, two of whom were very influential in these pieces. These are also holographs that you saw before, but they're on a much smaller scale. And these were done prior to my creating the larger pieces. Um, I had a bunch of the little teeny weeny um, holograph plates, which I made. What's nice about these also, I, I can work on these at home as opposed to in the print shop. Um, I love um, Hilma of Klant. Some of you saw that exhibit at the Guggenheim Museum. Um, she does a lot with um, geometry and a lot with botany and a lot with her colors. They're fantastic. Um, she was in the 1800s to the 1900s and Swedish artist. Another artist um, also uses a lot of circle, circles and spirals in her work. I also love Howard Dean Pindell, who I was, I think, first introduced to at Center for Contemporary Printmaking. Um, and then I got to know her better at um, the Rose Museum at um, Brandeis um, University. Um, and um, 
she also does a lot of collage in her work and she does a lot with hole punches and circles and her, her she doesn't she goes outside of that square picture picture plane and the third artist who is just near and dear to my heart is um faith ringold who there you'll see that there is if you haven't already there is a um a feeling of quilt in my work and i've I've always loved quilts and Faith is a dear friend and also um, has introduced me to the story quilt and I'm fortunate to have her um, to help celebrate my work. So going back though to um, Howard Dina and those hole punches, I went out and I bought piles of hole punches in all these different shapes with all of the um, these wonderful, wonderful um, floral shapes and all of these different kinds of things. And I um, used, um, I made all these punches and I made them on the printing plate. And I, we cut out lots of different pieces of paper. I, I buy paper everywhere. I take paper from everywhere. There are postage stamps there. Um, some of the prints that you don't see there that you might see on my website, which you'll get that information later. Um, we actually, printed we made our own um printed papers for and these were meticulous um i think i'm fair to say chris and i both work very meticulously and um we i mean how many people would if you look at the bottom one with the the um the little purple um blue spots in the middle of the pink flowers how many people would have that perfect blue dot in the middle um, with the with the gold around it? I mean, that is definitely a Chris Shore special. Um, and um, it was just a lot of fun building and figuring out and seeing how this whole series worked. And there is a postage stamp on the one top middle, if you look carefully, there are two postage stamps. So, um, they're, they're just great fun to work on. And um, we used um, like erasers and you put ink on them to get some of the things to happen. Um, Asian papers, you name it. If, I mean, I walk in with piles of paper. Um, I have here, I can show you what they look like. Um, this was, I mean, like something like this comes from a, a prayer flag, right? sacrilegiously probably cut out things and um there is ephemera everywhere um and we find it's still on the floor when i'm not using it in the studio and but i, I would also make note of the fact that depending on the screen size for each of the people here in attendance on the zoom meeting these are, are really likely larger than yes, the actual are larger than they are in real life. Yes. These are very precise, tiny, measured, um, carefully laid out uh, prints with a lot of um, individual attention to every little element that's in them. Um, oh. And you have a number of these. I mean, we, we only have a limited selection of them on view in the exhibition, but. Um, uh for all of the all of the different prints they were all unique in colors um, and textures in layout in everything um i was really fortunate with this series um i won a purchase prize um for the, in the show and um chris got to pick who got what prize i think and he no no am i wrong because you i got the avalon no, they. I didn't pick, but the juror picked the the award winners, and we matched people up because we weren't going to ship the Avalon to you know Southeast <laughs> Asia. <laughs> well, that's how. Well, that's how it happened. Okay, so the Avalon is became a big part of the show. Actually, Avalon <laughs> is a. Um, I can't even. How, um, it's made out of a microfiber. It's. A, they call it microfiber paper, but it's microfiber. And when we look at a show of hands, um, that's what it's created on. It's not on, on actual paper. So, yeah. Um, so well, it, let, let's see what's next. We, we must be getting close to some of those. Okay, that's the blueprint, the um, 
the blue primrose morning that you've seen um, that I was getting ready to print. And that print has both the sheen collet that I mentioned and it has the collage elements. Um, and this one, unlike the ones on the previous slide, which were two inches by two inches, these now make the jump to 12 inches by 12 inches. Right, and you can see the hole punches too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can talk more about them or we can move forward easily. I mean, that, um, if you look at the blue one, that does have the digital, a digital print in the middle of it from um, another watercolor silk screen that we printed into the piece, which was a lot of fun and interesting to do. And it gave it another layer. Um, because so. the, this series, I mean, these are two selections from a, a series um, that have all of these sheen collet elements on them, but came from, and Chris and Diane, you can correct me, but I, I believe there is a consistent print underneath with different um, prints yeah, it, on, it, on the surface. That's, it, that's this plate, and the plate that's has the circle around it. And at one point, um, there was an intern at CCP. So at one point, we were putting these little teeny pieces of paper all the way around. They had three of us working on a, on a print at a time um, because several of the others um, also have um, color, colored elements that were um, collaged on later. And that was, it was a meticulous process. Um, yeah. many, of, many of them have been. Yeah, and, and I think that's one of the things that um, like I've enjoyed over the past years having you in the studio is the Thank amount you. of detail and attention to like research and process that you put into all of the prints that you make. Um, and I mean, it's, it's a fitting moment that the next slide is the idea table. Um, you, you bring together like a variety of different um, symbols, materials, histories, um, and, and find that connection between them to, to bring them into your work. And so do you, you wanna share a little bit about what we're looking at? Okay, um, this was the day I, I talked about where we were going to, we were photographing, um, where yes. I brought in all of these things and some of the upcoming prints that we're going to be making or working on, um, we're, we're actually using some of the pieces that you're seeing here um, include, well, we've used the gloves, but some of the purses we've actually used in Photoshop, we've actually flipped them to create um, circular forms or, um, and we've, um, oh, we're, we're using some of the lingerie in, in creating some of the backgrounds and, but giving it totally different kinds of colors. We also, um, we shot a bunch of pomegranates, which are in the background, I think of one of the upcoming pieces, but we tried shooting things in different ways. One of the things that if you've seen the actual show, the, um, the black purse with the gold um, will um, eventually, that will be um, uh, front and center in one of, the one of the pieces that is coming up soon, but not quite there yet. And those gloves that you're seeing are definitely gloves that are actually in the print that you did see the le left hand Jenny. Mm -hmm. um, so these, the gloves were um, Rich, my husband Rich's um, um, grandmother's, my mother-in-law's, and um, I don't know if there are any of yours, Kim's in there, but the underwear, the beautiful lingerie, um, there, this lingerie bag we're using in an upcoming print. In fact, the next print that we're working on, which I mentioned is the Rimonim, which is, has to do with the Torah to create this beautiful, beautiful pattern. Um, it's hard to see here, but um, it, it's just got this gorgeous stitchery in it. And these, they were just so much fun. Um, well, and, I, and I think one of the things I love is, is how you're using like the the most beautiful elements of these or the most interesting patterns on them or the most unique kind of um, juxtapositions of these pieces that are that are what are so visually compelling. And you take those elements out and reconfigure them in ways that are meaningful to you. And, and it's not always immediately apparent also what it is that the source materials come from. Um, so in being able to see the photographs here, like we can, we can see kind of 
these as objects, but then in looking at your prints, um, it, it's helpful to have the guideposts from you to know like what you pulled out of them, what was of interest and what, um, what made that um, important jump and why you wanted to represent it there. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I've worked in a, a Judea kind of um, place. Um, people who are familiar with my older paintings, but this um, gave me an opportunity to explore a different way and um, printmaking does. Um, because yeah. here, this is, this is that next translation, that next stage. Um, some of you have seen the, um, the emails that I've sent out, or you've seen some of the um, social media that um, has come from Center for Contemporary Printmaking. And um, these were being done concurrently with the larger a show of hands pieces. And um, we created six different um, films of gloves, left hand, right hand, fully um, just opaque, um, some with lines, some with um, a um, half tone to um, figure out how we were going to um, tell the story for each one and create played with a lot of different color combinations. Each background is a monotype um, that is printed by itself. Um, the dot background you're seeing with the very beautiful um, yellows going toward the browns um, is actually, it's the, negatives that we got of, of, from a piece of paper that those are the holes in the paper. Um, the other one you're seeing is a piece of the purple was a piece of paper we run we ran through the press. And then the um, these wonderful um, mandalas are each different and each co different color combinations. They have the feeling of the Hamsa for protection. They are called offerings because we offer our hands either in gifts to help each other or they're very floral. They all have a very floral feeling to them. Um, and um, these are two of the in the show. There are nine in the whole series. Um, and yeah, there's... And then those led into taking them apart and yeah. making them much larger. And that's this Evalon we talked about. And um, this was really fun because Chris was manning the silk screens and we were turning these big pieces of Evalon different directions with different colors and figuring out where, where the colors were needed on these and the other pieces at a time. And then decided that we needed to cut some of them out and collage them on top to make them finished. So there are four of them. Um, they're, I don't, they're like 22 by 30. Um, they read really, they're just exciting. They're, this was, I think this was partially to get me out of my head with some of the um, imagery that I go with. It became, but it was also this exciting um, transformation from, um, again, if you look at the, if you get to see the show or if you look at my website later, you'll see there are again, more mini prints in more muted colors of, these mandalas of of gloves. Gloves are a dominant are a dominant theme um, that I've used. Yeah. And I mean the the color choices. I mean these just screamed out. Look at me in the studio. They had so much energy, so much enthusiasm. Like I, I remember coming into the studio when when you and Chris were working on these at various times, and I, I mean I. I couldn't have been more thrilled to see these. I mean, especially, you know, you were working on them um, 
you know, at a time when the, the energy level in, in our space, and I'm sure in many places, was, was pretty low. I mean, COVID has, has uh, changed things in, in, a, in a different way in different places. Um, but these were so exuberant. Um, uh, the colors are just stunning. And I mean, I, I know the, like the, the base of the prints have, um, the, they have their own like mandalas of gloves on them, but then there are also these additional ones laid on top and placed so carefully. I mean, it was, it was a real uh, problem solving effort to try and figure out where to put them. I mean, you wanted all of, I, I would have wanted all of them all the time. They, they were just so bold. Um, but yeah, all of these on the wall together in the gallery makes such a statement. Um, it's wonderful to stand in front of them and to look. And I think at the scale and the size that they are, um, they, they just, they're really commanding. And I'm, I'm so thrilled that this was kind of the direction that these took you and that, that you have them in. Thank you. Um, I have my master printer to thank for taking me in this direction because I would have stayed probably a lot smaller. If this was new for me to do something like this. Definitely. Well, I'd say it worked out well. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm thinking, do I have some of the smaller? No, I don't. Um, no. But this this moves into, I think, you know, a, another big project, um, <laughs> but in a, a, a more contemplative sort of way. And in this one, I mean, I also am stunned and, and, you know, watching all the pieces of this come together was, I mean, it was, it was just mind boggling what you did. And I don't know that, that it's abundantly clear just in this, this first image, what, what we're seeing. Um, but it's, it's a really important piece. Yeah. Um, Chris and I worked on this thing um, off and on for about a year. And um, it's about 23 and three quarters by 23 and three quarters, I think. And um, it was a big decision, even the paper choices, looking into that took a lot. Um, I wanted to create a piece that told the story in Judaism um, that goes back to mentioned in the Bible, it's mentioned in Kabbalah, it's mentioned in the Torah, I believe, um, if I have it correctly right now, um, to the 36 righteous. And um, I wanted to honor what's known as the Lamed Vavnik or the, um, and I wanted to figure out a way to do this because in our world, there are always supposedly um, the hidden righteous ones, and we don't ever know who these people are. Um, and I don't believe that those people are necessarily, they don't, I don't believe they are, they don't have to be Jewish people. I believe we all have people in our worlds that um, either we've been told stories about, um, and I think the narrative is so important and the, the oral histories you've all been told through your family's histories um, about somebody that is dear to you or that was really important. Um, it's funny, um, I, I have a write up about this and the, one of the first people that came to my mind, of course, is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, and then there was um, one of, another hero of mine is Regina Jonas, um, who was the first woman rabbi um, who, who died at the hands of the Nazis. Um, but I was thinking most recently as I watched um, wim, um, Women of the Movement, um, of the story of um, um, Mamie Till Mobley, who started the civil rights movement after her son was, um, was killed um, by 
in Mississippi um, in 1955, I believe everything happened. I was thinking about all of these people who um, we don't know who they are and they're supposedly, pe there are people among us and um, the candle stands for so many important things to all of us. Um, it's freedom, it's hope, it's light, it's peace, it's love, it's memory. I mean, it's, it's light. I mean, it's life. So um, I wanted to do this piece and um, all, part of our photo shoot was we had these candles um, perched like in plastic cups. And those were the candles that were used for this. And I also had photographs actually a photograph that I had taken that we worked from um, of flowers and um, everything was put together to create um, a puzzle and a magical, a magical story. Um, the most magical thing that happened in this piece is there is actually no pink ink on this piece. And if you look carefully what you're seeing on your screen, um, it's Diane, pink. let me let me see if the individual ones show that a little better. I don't know if they show it better. I don't know. No. Um, it's really weird what happened. The what looks like black in the background, and that's a photopolymer intaglio plate. Those are four inches by four inches. Um, each one of those, and they're all put together. And they, there was a um, there was a map that I made the whole thing to put the whole thing together. And um, and then those are silk screened in four different colors on top of it. And then everything was placed and glued. And um, there's the black is a very red tone, red with black. And Chris has explained to me that um, something called bronzing is what we think happened. The red has a certain amount of linseed oil in it. And um, the white is a transparent white, the first layer of white. And when we printed that first layer of white on the candles, I said, Chris, there's something weird going on. He said, what are you talking about? And I said, it's not white anymore. It's turning pink. And we printed on top of it with, a red and we printed it on top with a yellow and it kept turning pinker. And um, yeah, it's like the great miracle that happened there. It was wild. Um, and so we, we got this beautiful, this beautiful thing happened to tell the, add to this um, almost holy quality of this print. And I mean, that's the story I can tell you and leave you with for this print. It's really exciting. You know, it's, it's a complicated piece. I mean, it is a six by six grid of 36 individually printed prints that have been tiled together into another single print. And each one of those individual prints was printed with the floral background and then printed with the, the candles on them. Um, I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons why this took so long, but also the placement and the layout, the arrangement of the candles in, in each direction. But I, I mean, I remember the day when the, the white was printed and the pink was coming through. I mean, it was the most surprising, unusual, like mysterious, Thing. Printmaking miracle. I mean, it, it, it is the like printmaking accident of, of the century. Um, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but I mean, it, I think it, it, Kim, I think it's also worth mentioning there are six different floral backgrounds that, and there are six yeah. different photos of the candles, but yeah. they don't, it's not like one candle is on one background. They're all mixed up. So if you find one particular version of a candle, you'll see they could be on five or six different backgrounds, which is part of what made this complicated. I gave Diane the ability to mix and match. Once it was planned, we then had to execute the print 
to match what the original plan was. So yeah, yeah. But I I love the fact that this pink did come through. Um, I mean, it could be a very toned down, very serious, stolid piece, which would in some ways be very different from many of your, I mean, we were just before this looking at the, um, the bright, bright colors of these, and then to jump into something like this, if it had not had that, um, that carry through of the pink, which, I mean, in the candle at the upper left, that is the like second row candle one, um, I see a lot of, of pink and some sort of almost like a tie dye, like paisley something coming through in comparison with the candle up above. They didn't all do the exact same thing. And that and, was underneath each one. Well, it, right. And so you have that kind of sunflower-ish solid area beneath uh, row one candle one um, that's not under row two candle one um, it gives some continuity between some of your other pieces that have these bold bright colors um, in a way that is respectful of I think the meaning you have with this piece um, but but consistent with your work like it, it this one doesn't leave behind the the intention and the exuberance of the other ones, it just brings it centered in a much more focused way. And we focus on those candles that have that joy of life and that importance in them. Um, and and that, that I think is um, that magical mystery that happened. It, it had to happen with the white on this print for you. It was, it was, it was wonderful. It was just an, an incredible experience. And um, I, I know it's getting late for some people, but I want to just say we we had some leftover um, singles, so we made 24 um, single candles, um, each on different backgrounds. Some of them have the pink in them, some don't, um, and um, two of those are actually hanging in the show as well. Um, and. Uh, you can see with those six right now there you can see the six different candles um and they how they flicker um and you know i named i named those um don't let the light go out for peter yarrow um from the song light one candle um so yeah and, um, and and they became they they were part of this like I yeah I love that thank you um, and so Chris and I have a new project we're working on we have a few new ones but um, which will happen all in good time um, what's really exciting I think also is that the show is being extended and. Um, hopefully some people more people will be able to come and actually view the show um and that would be great um I, i'm so appreciative of everybody who's been here to that tonight um i'm so grateful to chris and to kim and I'm, I'm so grateful to all of you for for taking your time to be with me this evening and share with me um something that's so special and important to me um it's it's really it's 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 very special so thank you so so much um and thank you to my family for for everything so well diane it's it's been wonderful having you as this year's like solo show artist um i mean i've i've so respected all the work that you've put into these projects and i've seen them even before we knew where they were that they were going into this exhibition. Um, it's also been a wonderful learning experience. And um, I'm not of the Jewish faith. And so hearing about what these symbols mean to you beyond my experience and exposure to them has been you know, a, a really nice thing to hear about, but I also appreciate the universality of so many of them um, because you know, as you said, like water has great meaning for many, as do candles. Um, you know, nature, like the, there, there are things that carry through um, 
you know, cross cultures, cross people, um, and to get that window into, you know, where they fit in for you um, is important for me to know you as an artist and also as a person. So I've really appreciated that. Thank you so much. I mean, this has been a great opportunity. And if anybody here has had once a great opportunity to either take a class or when Monathon, which is our biggest fundraiser comes up again in, in the fall and you want to learn to do a monoprint or something, it's just, it's just a great community to be a part of. Um, and um, if you can work with Chris that day, it's, it's great too. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, just thinking um, before we we wrap up, are there any questions? Because um, you know we we do have the ability to take some questions. If you wanted to put something in the chat, um, you know, Chris is on hand. If you want like very very specific printmaking details, like Chris is definitely the person to go to. Um, we'd be happy to take anything if you do have a, a question or want to ask us something. And the chat is down at the bottom in the center. I realize it's late, so yeah, maybe people don't want to stick around for too much longer. Um, understood. All right. Well, I will thank everybody who attended. Um, I am I am grateful for your interest in hearing from Diane, participating and and being part of this Zoom talk um, put together by the Center for Contemporary Printmaking. If you're in Connecticut, near Connecticut, um, we're right off of I-95 in Norwalk. Um, we're in a public park called Matthews Park. And it's, as you saw on the last slide, we're an old stone carriage house, um, which is a quirky, interesting um, architectural jewel of something that um, you know, has its own kind of weird specifics. Um, but it's got beautiful galleries, printmaking studio space for artists. And we welcome everybody at any time. It's free and open to the public. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, well, I will um, end the, the, uh, the meeting for everyone. Um, I thank you all for coming. And if you do want to reach out to us, we are online, we are on Instagram. Diane is around on Instagram as well on her website. And um, other than that, please, everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you.